Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of the Fiorentina career mode. This is episode number 59 and today we do start off with a game against Feyenoord, the Dutch team, in the Champions Cup. Obviously in our previous game in the Champions League we drew against 1989 Hoffenheim today. I was hoping for a better result against Feyenoord. They do have a good team. A lot of the Dutch teams do have some really nice young talent like Jordi Classy, Tony Vilhena and Bateus, obviously you can see in their team now, and obviously players like Depay have come from the area Divisi, along with people like Kishner as well, so there is a lot of really good players in the area Divisi, and they, I kind of went into this game underestimating them, them a lot, and Loic Remy actually wasn't playing in this game, he was a little bit low on fitness, and I wanted to save him for the game which we have against AC Milan and then two days after that in the next episode we have a game against Juventus so this episode and next episode will be frustrating because of player fitness levels and such but we do unfortunately go 1-0 down at the hands of Feyenoord which was really what I didn't want you know it was a pain in the ass to try and get back into the game and we came in just playing too easily and letting them get through and they did punish us fairly quickly for that mistake and we get close there with Robin unfortunately on his weaker foot not being able to do the business but they come here with Bateas he passes it over to Toonstra and he finishes it into an open net easy as you like and final do find themselves 2-0 in front with inside 20 minutes but we do manage to break through here with Iron Robin the Dutchman obviously playing against a Dutch side so sh showing them why he is probably well he is in the game anyway the best Dutch player and probably in the world right now he probably is the best Dutch player that, that you know Holland have or Netherlands so yeah and it also gives me a chance this game to see some of the players that I might want to call up to the international selection for the international friendlies that we have coming up I believe in the next episode they'll probably be just the goals from them games and I probably won't record anything else so what will probably happen is we'll have three games with Fiorentina and one or two international friendlies but then friendlies will only have the goals and the main parts that happen during them games they won't have anything more but we were still 2-1 behind at this point. Really wanted to try and get back into this. It comes out to Kolesignac here. He plays it down to Kandreva. Cuts inside to Robin. Robin cuts inside with a Ronaldo chop. And a lovely finish by the Dutchman to put ourselves 2 all with Feyenoord. Iron Robin is incredible recently. Really have been enjoying it have been enjoying using them. Sorry if you could hear my chair squeaking a minute ago. I had to move position. But an absolutely splendid strike from Robin. Goes straight past the goalkeeper. Nothing more to say about that and we do find ourselves on level terms once again which is good because I did want to try and win this game Robin coming close there to getting himself a hat trick in the 70 just well just before 17 minutes really just under 15 minutes to go at this point and we were still holding on and I was just really playing for a draw at this point I wouldn't have minded a win but I definitely didn't want to play too attacking and end up getting a loss because we seem to be struggling a lot in the Champions League in recent career modes. I don't know why, because this sort of team that we have here, we started off the Serie A season really well. I think we've won five games on the trot, and obviously the same goes with the PSG series up until episode four, which you guys would have seen by now. And, you know, we seem to just struggle in the Champions League, but in the league we seem to do fine, but we do end up picking up just a single point. So now from two games in the Champions League, we have two points. We do need to step up the pace. And you can see in our group... Uh, Hoffenheim beat Zenit 2-1 so we our next game I imagine will be against Zenit but we do go into the international selection for the Netherlands obviously we did take the role of as manager sorry and we do end up calling up I think one player in this I was looking for the team just kind of you know seeing if I'd be happy with these guys for the friendlies the, the Dutch do have a very good national team that is something to note you know there are some absolutely Splendid players in them. We do end up taking out Jetro Williams because of an injury, and we end up replacing him with Ron Vlaar, the ex Aston Villa man, who I believe right now is a free agent. That's definitely someone that maybe Arsenal should try and pick up Ron Vlaar because he's a good player. And we do end up calling up Kishner, the young Dutch winger, and we give him a chance instead of Promus. And we have as our attackers Van Persie, Depay, Dost, Zov Zovacic. I don't know how to say that guy's name. And obviously Kishner so that's looking like a good front line we'll see how we do in the international friendlies obviously we're not going to be here for any European tournaments because at the end of this season that is going to be the end of this series unless we get time but I don't think we're not in 2018 so there isn't going to be any World Cups or anything like that going on I believe or oh, we could be in 2018 actually so we could be here for the World Cup but I probably won't play it so we just get to use a bit of international management. If you guys want me to do more of it in FIFA 16, do let me know. I'll try and take 
what I'll do is if we start with a Premier League team, for example, I will take the England job straight as you know as soon as it comes in, and we'll try and manage you know England for as long as possible because it helps with getting players from that country into your team. Obviously, you can go and check their overalls before they you know join your club. And we start with a stunning strike from Iron Robin Oxley Chamberlain was playing instead of Antonio Candreva and it seemed to be paying off in this game. Candreva was a little bit tired. I wanted to save him for the game against Juventus, which we have in the next episode. And this was only a two-day break. So I think this game was played on either a Wednesday or a Friday. And then two days later, we've got a game against Juventus. So I didn't want to completely knack at everyone out. And there was a few changes. I think we had Figueres playing at right uh, right centre-back because he came to me and said you know, that he wanted to play more of a role in the team. Obviously, since we've been playing the 3-5-2, him and Kola Shignac, well, no, just him in general because Kola Shignac plays left-back, haven't been getting into the team as much. So, I wanted to try and give him a chance. We did play Gaiasi Zardes out on the left as well in favour of Jesse Rodriguez. And I wasn't too sure how this would do. Obviously, AC Milan are a big team, but the game against Juventus for me is the one that I want to make sure I have every single player fit. And by the looks of it, Milan weren't playing very well. We haven't really struggled too much against AC Milan in this series since it's been you know going and I'm surprised because AC Milan are a good team obviously in recent years them and Inter Milan have very much slipped off the pace in Serie A you know think back five six years ago they used to have incredible teams and now not so much but and they still got good teams and by the way that guys is probably one of the best goals I've ever scored this year I know he scored an absolute cracker with Hesse Rodriguez in the last episode so let me know which goal you think is better that or this strike by Iron Robin. Personally, I think that is better because it's from an awkward angle. There's a player sliding in to get him, and the amount of height he gets on that is just stunning. That's obviously what Robin is known for, is some absolutely magnificent finishes. And so glad we managed to get him on a pre-contract because that is stunning. You know, if we still had Rossi instead of Robin, he would not have scored that. Loic Remy wouldn't have scored that. You know, only someone like Robin of you know of Robin's caliber can score them goals and I'm so pleased that he managed to do it. We try and get him a hat-trick there but a good save from Diego Lopez to prevent it. We try and do the Nepenthes free kick again. Unfortunately a bit too much power otherwise it could have ended up into the back of the net but we do get a chance to try and get Iron Robin a hat-trick here. He gets brung down on the edge of the area by Alex, the big ex-PSG man. Really decent defender by the looks of it because he's so t strong and tall and it wasn't even Alex, I apologise, it was a bar tip. but look at that. Iron Robin gets himself his hat-trick in the 90th minute and does make it 3-0 to Fiorentina against AC Milan. I think we were, at home, we were at home as well, so a fantastic free kick from Robin. It felt good when I took it. I didn't realise it was going to hit the post, but we got quite lucky. You'll see, I think, in the next replay here how lucky it was to come off that post. It looked like it was going to go off out the post, but it actually went in off the post, which was very lucky indeed, and we do pick up a 3-0 victory. Obviously, it wouldn't have mattered anyway, but it gave Robin the hat-trick that he so rightly deserved in that game. Scored two really decent, well, three really decent goals, a free kick, a volley, and a stunning long shot, so very good from Iron Robin. You can see there we do get an injury to Loic Remy in that game, unfortunately, for a month with a sprained ankle, which is frustrating. And we do go here, and we notice this guy, he's got a potential of 78 to 94, so I decided to sign him up to the squad. Unfortunately, we didn't have enough funds, so I actually had to go and adjust the wage budget and go back and do it. But although we may not use him, he looks decent and he may improve. 78 to 94 isn't the worst potential. If we can get that potential up to 85 to 94 or 86 to 94, then you know, he definitely will probably end up into the first team. But anyway, guys, that is the lead table at the end of this episode. We've won six games on the trot. Obviously, next episode will be a decider, really, because we have Juventus. That could be a game that we could end up losing. Hopefully, we don't, and we continue in very good form. Next episode is episode 16. As I said, we will have three games as a special every five episodes, which I haven't done recently because of transfers and stuff like that. But you'll have that, and you also have probably one international friendly game as well. So you technically have four games in next episode, which hopefully you guys are excited for. If you are, if we can smash a like button, that would be greatly appreciated. If you haven't already, go and subscribe to the channel for daily FIFA content. And I'll speak to you guys in the next episode very soon.